Hi guys, welcome back. It's Salim with you, and welcome to my channel, Learning Simplify. If you are just starting your car from rest, and you're going to drive it, you know when you're just starting the car from the rest and you're going to drive it, what is your initial velocity? Because you're starting from rest, initial velocity is zero. Imagine you're just driving it for a little distance. And you're achieving a new velocity we would call that as the final velocity am i right so we have two velocities normally we familiarize with initial velocity and final velocity so what is u u is initial velocity and what is v v is final velocity so you all know this are, there are two kinds of velocities initial and final now let us take by the same way initial and final momentum so what will be that let us take this into momentum so initial momentum pi and final momentum pf imagine i put a letter like that initial moment is going to be momentum is what mass into velocity we know p equal to mv so momentum is mass into velocity so here we take mass into initial velocity is going to be u am i right and here we can go mass into final velocity going to be v. Okay. Now, what is the third thing? All right. If these are the two velocities, I mean two momentums, two momentums, what is the difference in the momentum? Okay. So difference in the momentum is Pf minus Pi. Momentum final minus. Momentum initial is going to be mv minus mu. That's equal to m into v minus u. Hope you understand what I mean. So, mass into V minus U. So, this says exactly that the change in momentum. In physics, what we normally do, we just divide some values with respect to the time. And, and whenever we divide, most of the case, whenever we divide, in most case, with time, we could use a particular term in physics that is rate. Okay, things happening at a particular time, we could normally use a word called rate. I would like to write it here so that you can understand rate. So, if I write m into v minus u divided by t, all right. So, uh, okay, so what is this going to be uh, told as a statement? This mathematical formula, I'm going to change it to a statement. What is it? So time, for start, let's start from the denominator. Time says rate and m says change in momentum. So this is rate of change of momentum. Are you getting the point? I repeat, start from the denominator. Denominator time is the rate and m into v minus u is the change in momentum. So it is rate of change of momentum. All right. So that is the next part that you have to get. Rate of change of momentum. Okay. That is always found to be directly proportional. This symbol is called directly proportional to the force applied. Okay. Rate of change of momentum is always found directly proportional to the force. Okay. What force? It's not the normal force. Unbalanced force applied in a particular direction. This has nothing to do with what the vector or any other thing. This is just my method for you. I have written here just in green color. What is it? It is, it is to make a statement. And here we go. What is it? How to make the statement? What is Newton's second law of motion? Are you ready to make the statement with me? State Newton's second law of motion. Never by heart. That is method. If you are deciding to do it, you can do it. Here we go. What is this? T. Rate. What is this? Change of moment. What is this? Directly proportional. What is this? Unbalanced. I mean this U for unbalanced force. And what is this? Direction of force. Okay. Don't read this as anything else. That is just my symbol. Now, let's go by adding all together and making a beautiful statement. Remember, if your English is not handicapped, you are the winner. Okay, so what's it? The rate of change of momentum 
is always directly proportional to the unbalanced force applied in the direction of force. That's a statement for second law of motion. We are like, what happened? Let me make it once more. Do not by heart. Just follow my fingertips and you caught it. Okay. T means rate of upper numeratrix change of momentum. So we write the rate of change of momentum is always directly proportional to the applied unbalanced force in the direction of force. Now let's go faster. What is it? The rate of change of momentum is always directly proportional to applied unbalanced force in the direction of force. That's called as, that is a statement for Newton's second law of motion. And then what is the next perplexing thing people Normally, I have seen this mistake done by most of the people. They try to by heart the derivations. Do you know the word derivation itself is what? To derive, to make, to find out, to get to conclusion, to bring into picture. And how can you by heart a derivation, man? Come on, let's go. Imagine, you got a question. Derive a formula for Newton's second law of motion. <coughs> From this scratch, let me tell you how to make it. Okay, you know, <coughs> at the start of any derivation, you're supposed to write all the all the terminologies, all the letters, all the alphabets and abbreviations you're going to use in the derivation. So in our derivation, we are going to use only these letters, only these letters. Let me put them in a box so that we can easily identify. We're going to use only these letters, all right? Okay, so let's go. Consider, we start again, after that I will repeat. Consider an object of mass m, all right? Follow my fingertips so you will never miss anything. Consider an object of mass m moving from an initial velocity of u, attaining a final velocity of v in a particular time t where a force is acting on it, F. These are the major things you're going to write at the top of your derivation. Hope you caught me. Follow my fingertips and write all this without looking anywhere. Consider an object of mass M moving with an initial velocity U attaining a final velocity V in a given time or in a time T and the force acting on it is F. That is the first statement you're going to write. What is next? After writing this, we know that, here we go, from the scratch we continue. We know that initial momentum is m into u and final momentum is m into v. So, the rate of, I mean the change in momentum is m into v minus m into u. That's what you're going to write next. Then we write that's equal to m into v minus u. Okay, then what? According to, you'll add a statement, according to Newton's second law, m into v minus u is directly proportional to f. Then you write this statement, what? Therefore, therefore, okay, let's forget it. f is equal to, f is directly proportional m into v minus u. Then you know, we have to remove the proportionality sign. We write f is equal to k, because you are using a constant there, k m into v minus u divided by t. All right. So now we got what? A constant k. And we have made a formula. But even then we can simplify one more thing in that. What is it? We already know that acceleration is what? Rate of change of velocity. Or v minus u by t is always also called as a. So let us take this as the equation 1 and this as equation 2. So guys, we have two equations. What is it? Equation 1 and equation 2. Let us substitute the equation 2 in equation 1. So next line you'll write, substituting equation 2 in 1. What do we get? F is equal to K M V minus U by T is substituted as A. K M A. 
and that is the derivation for the formula the mathematical derivation of a beautiful derivation for newton's second law of motion so now you understood how to derive it but exactly what is this law saying to us that's a question did you understand no let me tell you what is it let us take this particular let's take k as one for the time being and forget it f is equal to m into v minus u by t here we go guys okay f is equal to m into v minus u divided by t this is what newton's second law is now what is actually this saying that is f is inversely proportional to t because denominator now when f increase t decrease when t increase f decrease do you understand what i mean imagine all these values are put as one this is one this all of what this is two minus one is one uh, numerator is one denominator is one what is f f is one great if numerator is one denominator is 10 f is going to point one what does it mean when denominator increase f decrease this relation is called inversely proportional so what happens now when f increase t decrease when t increase f decrease when time increase force decrease when force increase time decrease what that is newton's law let us catch how do we apply it okay one boxer he knocks his enemy down not like what you're seeing in movies and all it's wrong he aims at the enemy and whenever he get a chance he just contact his his boxing gloves and his powerful arms on his face and just the contact time is maximum reduced to the least you must have seen boxers do like this they pull the hand very quickly why when they reduce the contact time this value becomes less and this value becomes more that means the less the time for contracting the more the force and the person get knocked out so in this the person try to increase his force when will the person try to decrease the force all right so when the uh, fielder is catching the ball the moment he catches you must have noticed him pulling his hand down okay he just catch the ball and pull it down so while he is catching the ball when the ball is just making contact with his palm he is not allowing the ball to stay there and come to sudden rest rather he pulls it and uh, and by pulling it he increases the time for the ball to come to rest and then he holds it so meanwhile what happens the time taken to for the ball to come to rest is increased when time is increased the force by which the ball is going to affect his palm decreased here i would like to conclude with you what is it guys what is the law newton's second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum is always directly proportional to the unbalanced force applied in the direction of the force hope you have understood the topic you can put the comments in the box below for getting more such videos kindly subscribe press the bell icon and that's it see you for the next video bye bye